up? It's Joe Rady from Rady's Rides. I'm back here at Dimmit Chevrolet in Clearwater, Florida. And guess what? We have some Camaro fun for you. This is a 2022 Chevrolet Camaro. This particular one is a Camaro LS. But before we get into this name badge that is so iconic, let's talk about what's going on here. Chevrolet Camaro. You would have to be living under a rock or another planet to not know what the Chevrolet Camaro is. The Camaro was the answer to Ford's Mustang. First, the Mustang came about in 1964 and a half, and then in 1967 was the day of reckoning when it came with the Chevrolet Camaro, plus the Pontiac Firebird. Now, unfortunately, Pontiac went out of business back in 2009, but the Chevrolet Camaro, it's got a little bit of life left in it before Chevy decides to kill it off again. Because remember, 2002, that was the last year of the F body and the last year of a Camaro for a while. Now, with this review, I wanna do something that maybe some of you are already scratching your head about. I wanna compare this 2022 Chevrolet Camaro LS to a totally redesigned Subaru BRZ or Toyota GR86. Now, you might be saying to yourself, well, Joe, Aren't they two totally different cars? Yes and no. When it comes to price point, very similar. When it comes to real wheel drive setup, obviously spot on the money. Plus you have the choice of automatic or manual in both of them. So let's go ahead, let's find out which way you should go with your sports car money. Maybe you don't have a hundred grand to go get a Porsche, but these cars are bringing a lot of value, but which way should you go? So let's go ahead, let's dive into our 2022 Camaro LS and find out. Right off the bat, you know the body lines. This sixth generation of the Camaro is gonna be the last generation, and they really did a great job. It actually sits on the same chassis as the Cadillac ATS when that car was around. So you are gonna get a little bit smaller Camaro compared to the fifth gen. Now up front, we do have that very, very sleek angular lighting, projector beam style headlight with our LED turn singles looking really slick. You compare this to a BRZ or a GR86, you get full LED lighting all the way around on those vehicles. So something to think about. And of course, if you don't like the LS, there's plenty of other trims and options for the Camaro, but that's gonna bring up the price. We're trying to keep it similar to the BRZ and the GR86. Now the good news is, just like those two other vehicles, we have functionality at the front of the business, a functional side air curtain. It's gonna enter in very nicely in this flat black area and then go down the side of the vehicle with the air. Everything else is flat black. And then as we come across the grill, this grill is specific to the LS and the LT1 Camaro. But we'll explain LT1 Camaro for another review on another day. So you have flat black, fully functional up top. You got that Chevrolet bow tie, such an iconic symbol of this brand. And then working your way down, more functionality. Now the interesting thing is, behind this lower portion, you're gonna find an intercooler. Something you're not gonna get on a BRZ because underneath the hood, we have turbocharged power where a lot of people were hoping, wishing, and praying for a turbocharged BRZ or GR86. Chevrolet has been doing it all along on this sixth generation of the Camaro with turbocharged power. But we'll get more to that in a second. Everything else, very clean. And I'm telling you, with the black paint job, looks very, very sporty. Now, when you get up onto the hood, you're gonna get that beautiful rise, semi-bulge of a hood, body lines going right towards the windshield. Everything else has that unique Camaro feel. Now, as we come around the bend, what are we working with? Wheel and tire setup. You are gonna get these very simple, but aesthetically pleasing metallic silver wheels, that Y-spoke design. There's that metallic silver paint job to them. And if you're wondering, well, Joe, what is the size of this wheel? If you're looking at a BRZ or a GR86, obviously you have the ability to get those optional 18 inch wheels. This though, is your standard 18 inch wheel. You could go up to 20 inch wheels on a Chevrolet Camaro. So if you're comparing wheel for wheel, this 18 inch is gonna be spot on similar in diameter to the BRZ wheel. I actually like the way the BRZ wheel looks better. 
and you gotta go limited trim to get the 18 inch wheel or the GR86, same thing, the limited trim. It's a 245 on the width and a super meaty 50 series sidewall. Compared to the BRZ and GR86, those are gonna have lower profile tires. Something to think about when it comes to handling, but you are getting the same wheel size and you're getting fully ventilated rotors up front. Now coming down the side of the vehicle, no fake vents or anything. You got your Camaro badge with the good old red, white, and blue. Everything else from the side, if you are not a car person, you're not gonna know the difference between this Camaro LS and a Camaro ZL1. Same silhouette from front to back, that lower roof line and lower side glass. Obviously from an overall size standpoint, this Camaro is much larger than the BRZ or the GR86. So something to think about if you really need that extra room compared to those other two vehicles. But working our way towards the rear, you have a flat black shark fin antenna, color matched on the door handles, and then out back, just like up front, we have those 18 inch wheels. With that design, obviously having the larger sidewall is gonna allow us to uh, be able to maybe have a little bit more comfortable ride. And that's really where this Camaro is gonna win. Definitely have a more comfortable ride than the BRZ or the GR86. But coming around back, super slick. No rear wing or anything like that. If you want a rear wing, those would be optional. BRZ and the 86 both come with that nice ducktail set up in the rear trunk. I do like the way it's grown on me how they've done the tail lights. Nice clean design, the Chevrolet bow tie. And then as we drop it all the way down, you're gonna get one exhaust on each side. Yes, just like the BRZ and the GR86. And this is, like I mentioned, rear wheel drive. But let's go ahead, let's pop the hood so we can compare numbers with this Camaro and the competition. All right, guys, we got the hood pop. You do have hydraulic hood struts on this Camaro, on the BRZ and GR86. You have a prop rod, but what do we have? You get the turbocharged power. You want your BRZ, you want your GR86, you get on this Camaro. And guess what? Chevrolet has done a lot of work with small displacement turbocharged engines over the year. What are you looking at? You're looking at a two liter inline four turbocharged engine, 275 horsepower, 295 pound-feet of torque. Let's compare that to the BRZ and GR86. Even with the larger displacement, 2.4 liter flat four, you're getting 228 horsepower and not even close to the amount of torque that this car produces. Ours has a six-speed manual, zero to 60, if you know how to do the business, around 5.4 seconds, the car weighs 3,351 pounds. You compare that to the BRZ and the 86, that's where they are gonna be winners. They come in at 2,800 pounds. Quarter mile is gonna go by at 13.8 seconds and top speed is 145 miles an hour. MPGs, 20 in the city, 30 on the highway. Looking at the engine, I love the way you could see that nice aluminum cam cover up top. You got your ignition coils for the four cylinders and underneath the heat shield, to your right there is gonna be the turbocharger nestled right underneath there. So really shows a great layout, lots of room, like the good old days when you used to pop a hood on a car and see actual ground underneath, which you could do with this vehicle. But you know what? Why don't we fire it up and hear what it sounds like? guys we're inside this 2022 camaro ls this is a ls1 when it comes to options i know you're saying to yourself well joe i've actually been thinking about this comparison i know most people think you're crazy which you're right most people do think i'm crazy but i know you're saying that most people think you're crazy for comparing a brz and an 86 to a camaro well you could do it with this trim so i know you're probably saying well joe how much is this here's the big news MSRP for the way that this one is optioned is $26,000. Just to put that in perspective for you, it's cheaper than the BRZ Limited and the GR86, 
but let's see what you get for the money to the door panels. Now, unfortunately, the door panels are a little bland. Lots of hard black plastic, but we got to look at price point. You do have soft material on the smaller armrest with the white contrast stitching, and you have a pocket back there that could easily put six toaster strudels from Pillsbury. Everything else is going to be flat black, and there's a little bit of metallic silver to kind of spruce it up. Now, going from the door panel to the dash, you are getting this leather style material, which looks clean. The stitch work, hard material, but the good news is there's a lot of flat black, so you're not going to get a bunch of glare or fingerprints. Now, with this being the lowest trim, you are getting a smaller infotainment system than on the BRZ or the 86. If you go limited on those, you're getting an eight inch system. This is a seven inch system, but you do have wireless Apple CarPlay and Android Auto. You can adjust your climate features. And I do like the quality of the colors and the fonts. Very easy to navigate through. And then let me show you the backup camera. This is unbelievable. The resolution is spot on the money. Much better than the BRZ or the 86. And you got trajectory. Sliding your way down, you got your AC controls. I love the way you adjust the temperature on one ring, the blower fan speed on the other wing, uh, wing and ring. This is where the magic happens though. A slick shifting, six speed manual transmission, nice crisp engagement, and pretty short throws. I'm actually pretty impressed and I can't wait to go on throttle with you. We do have more of that off-white contrast stitching on the shift boot, your mode selector button. I hate where they put the 12 volt. They should have put it somewhere up closer so that the cord isn't gonna be in your way, but it is what it is. And just to prove that it's there, there it is. Don't put your finger, ah! Don't put your finger in it. Two cup holders, your Chevrolet bow tie on the key fob. There you go. There's no remote start because we have a manual transmission. Hard armrest, open it up, really no storage. You got two USBs, maybe two Twinkies. Believe it or not, the BRZ in the 86 actually has more room for Twinkies. Who would have ever thunk it? Seats, cloth, where you're gonna get some sexier seats in the BRZ with the Alcantara and the leather, but you do have that stitching, the gray material. And here's the bizarre part. You actually have electric assist for the back, manual control for the front, the bottom portion. I actually have full electric assist. So something to think about. Plenty of headroom once you get in, just like in the BRZ, but there's a little bit more room in here for sure, especially when you look at the back seat area, which we're gonna go ahead and just move the seat out of the way. There's the back seat, much more space, still not enough, but much more than the BRZ or the GR86. But why don't you get your butt over here because I got a flat bottom steering wheel. I've been dying to show you. Come right, on. guys, business time in this triple pedal Camaro. We do have our seat controls, easy to get to. Nice electric assist, like I pointed out. Steering wheel, unlike the BRZ, this has a flat bottom wheel with that Camaro name staring you at right smack dab in the face. You got your contrast gray stitching. It is manual tilting and telescoping steering wheel. And then the gauges are nicely laid out. You have an analog tack, speedometer, fuel gauge, and coolant gauge. And then you have a digital display in the center that you could scroll through some information, including oil life and your air pressure. But you know what? We're gonna get to that part with the trunk because I'm dying to show you what on throttle's like in this Camaro. Let's get All to right, it. guys, time to get in the trunk of the Camaro. We lift it up. You're gonna be greeted to the biggest zonk is a very, very tight opening, very small opening. The good news is once you get whatever you're trying to put in the trunk past this opening, it actually opens up nicely. A little over nine cubic feet of space. The seat is gonna fold down. To be honest with you, the BRZ has about the same amount of capacity, but it's much easier to get things in and out of the back of the BRZ or the GR86. But let's go ahead, let's get to the most important part of why you are questioning which way you should go, BRZ, GR86, or this Camaro. Let's put the rubber to the road and go on throttle in our Camaro. All right, guys, we're leaving Dimmit Chevrolet. We are in this 2022 Chevrolet Camaro LS, and we're gonna go on throttle. Here we go. I tell you, I really, really like the power delivery in this four-cylinder turbo. It sounds like blasphemy, I know, but when you look at the horsepower, 275 horsepower, it's crazy to think that, go back to the 1980s, that's more than an IROC-Z 
was putting out. Figure that out. So it really goes to show how technology has come a long way and has really opened up the door for even smaller displacement engines to produce plenty of power. And like I said, if you've been wanting a turbocharged BRZ, you might as well keep holding out for it because it's, it's gonna be probably never. So either hold out or give up. The nice thing is you could go with the inline four instead of the flat four and get that turbocharged setup with this Chevrolet Camaro. Easy to get to that seven inch system. The seats are actually really comfy. And I would think visibility is pretty close to being the same between this and the BRZ. But uh, shifter action is very smooth. And another thing I like about it is that if you're new to manual transmissions, the pickup point is actually better in this Camaro than it is in the BRZ. But uh, we're gonna watch out for some of this traffic and slow down here. But once again, from a slow roll, our throttle, here we go, second gear. They're not pumping a bunch of fake sound into the cockpit, which is great. Heel toe downshifting is a piece of cake in this thing. And even with those beefy sidewalls, it actually still handles very nicely. Good feedback coming to the steering wheel. Now the BRZ is gonna definitely, and the GR86 are gonna take the cake when it comes to communication through the steering wheel. You're gonna get all the info of how much traction you have at the front of the vehicle and the rear of the vehicle. But this, you are gonna be able to obviously out accelerate both of those vehicles. But I'm telling you, it builds boost pretty smoothly for a turbocharged engine in this vehicle. Visibility is gonna be what it is in this type of car. It looks good from the outside, but of course creates those blind spots, but once you learn to live with this vehicle, this Camaro, and learn where those blind spots are, it's actually really easy peasy. But look at this, clutch pickup is perfect. Not too light, not too heavy. And then you got a good slick shifting transmission with this six speed in this vehicle. And then of course, for that city commuting, you're gonna have more room in the car. It's more comfortable. The seats are very, very comfy. Obviously, in the BRZ, you're gonna have more bolstering, but for comfort, the seats are great. Even with the cloth. Let me go ahead and downshift the first here. Slow roll, on throttle, here we go. A Little bit of a chirp there. I'm telling you, man, it really goes well through the gears. Brakes feel good. And then heel toe downshifting is a piece of cake in this thing. Odd throttle, here we go. Yeah! Put the smile on your face. And then you got that classic Camaro look. You know, something that goes all the way back to 1967. The BRZ has been around since 2013. So obviously a lot more heritage with this Chevrolet Camaro compared to either the 86 or the BRZ, although there is the AE86, and that does have a lot of history itself. But hopefully this gave you a nice idea of what this Camaro LS is all about. We're gonna get back to Dimit Chevrolet and wrap it up, so I'll see you in a split second. All right, guys, it's been a slick shifting, manual transmission kind of day here at Dimit Chevrolet. I definitely gotta thank Raheel and the rest of the crew getting us a 2022 Camaro LS for this comparison idea, what do you think? More power, more weight, but you are gonna have that choice of that six-speed manual or the automatic. Which way are you gonna put your money? Do you wanna go with that super sleek and sexy BRZ and GR86? Or do you wanna go with this setup in the Camaro? Let me know which way you would go in the comment section, but if you're new to the channel and you're on your way out, hit that subscribe button. I promise you it's worthwhile. Come back for more. If you are a subscriber, thank you for being part of the Raised Rights family. If you want to help us keep making great content just for you in the channel, click the link in the description. Get yourself some Raised Rights merch. Got to get out to the queen of the camera. She loves manual transmissions. She's all about hashtag save the manuals. Show Lori some love in the comment section. Lori, thank you for busting your butt out here today. And just like always, guys, I'll see you on the next ride.